are still young. There was a point in my community, a hill, where I would stand and be able to see the snows. As we grew up, when I was just 10 years, we could, we could no longer see the snows we used to see. The beauty of my village was already eroded. The land was already degraded. What have been that childhood story you long to share? Esther, inspired by her childhood background, is creating inspirational works in her community. Guys, welcome to the next inspired episode on the Visa platform with your host, Betty Osei Bonsu. Today, we landed in Uganda hearing from Esther Mohindo, who uses nature-based solutions such as three planting exercises to reclaim degraded landslided areas in her community. Guys, come on, let's go and hear this very inspiring story. My name is Mohindo Esther, a conservation activist and a gender equality advocate. I'm 22 years old. I come from a village which is called Ihandiro, which is a neighbor to the Mount Renzori National Park, which is both a heritage and Ramsar site. Mount Renzori National Park has a lot of biodiversity, which it has the Margarita Peak, which has the snows, and it has the three horned chameleon, which is endemic to the Mount Renzori. I would like to know what actually inspired you to bring about such innovation in, no, in your community. Do you have any story from your childhood you'd want to share with us? I grew up as a youngster one kid who loved to ask this and that, who loved to engage with others. When I we was still young, there was a point in my community, a hill, where I would stand and be able to see the snows. As we grew up, when I was just 10 years, we could, we could no longer see the snows we used to see. The beauty of my village was already eroded. The land was already degraded. To support the plants, the rocks were left bare. We came up as youth and formed a youth-based organization to help the community, our own community, to cope with climate change. I grew up in my village, where my village directly depended on nature. My community directly depended on nature for survival through charcoal burning, wood, and getting, hunting down animals for food. My community was full of beauty in the previous years, when we were still young. But over decades, the community forest has been cleared, and now pressure to the Mount Renzori National Park in search for the wood and the chapel. As a person that has grown up in this village, who had no any other alternative than to depend directly on nature, leaving our hills bare and none good, but prone to landslides. Like community, we make our nursery beds and give tree seedlings to the community. At a very little and no at some time, most times we give them at a free cost. The trees are restoring the degraded lands that can no longer support farming. Nothing can be grown on these hills. They are only the trees that can restore these degraded lands. We have given out over 3,000 trees to the communities to restore the degraded lands in the past year. These trees act as carbon sinks. As carbon is emitted in the atmosphere, the trees act as carbon sinks and our, the accumulation of the greenhouse gases reduces in the atmosphere. The other program is the rural access to clean energy. My community previously used to use candles. We came up with an idea of using solar. Vegetization about the advantages of using candles and, and over the advantages of using solar over the advantages of using candles. As I speak now, my community is lit with the solars. My community now uses echo stoves, which is from here, and I myself am able to make an echo stove. These echo stoves are made in such a way that they sell 50% of the wood. Although the land was reafforested, afforestation was done and afforestation was done on these hills, 
but the trees were continuously being cut before the age, the mature age where they're supposed to be harvested. But the ecostoves, saving 50% of the wood, the rate at which the trees are cut has reduced than in the past years, in the previous years, where they used to use three stone stoves, traditional stove cook stoves. The stoves will have been able to reach over 7,000, 70,000 homes with our eco stoves. That is a great impact in my community, which will help the, the, the trees grow up to such good age where they're supposed to be harvested. In a way, that will be helping reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. <coughs> Another project is the eco investment. As people are growing these trees, they will still cut them down because they need food, they need fish to take their kids at school. So the eco investments where I have the beef keeping, they will harvest the honey, the trees will grow as the hives are under the trees. So they will keep harvesting the honey as the trees grow to a good age. We also create awareness about fish farming where the people make fish ponds instead of planting trees in the swamps or sugar canes in the swamps, we advocate for fish farming as they are getting food and at the same time they are not drying the swamps. They are maintaining the ecosystem, the balance in the ecosystem. I can, I'm currently the Vice President of Uganda Wildlife Research and Training Institute, which is the only institute for wildlife profession in Uganda and in East Africa. Uganda Wildlife Research and Training Institute is an institution that trains wildlife, natural resource management, and tourism. What inspired me to go to this institute? I had grown up with the mind of helping my community, and I was I had already dwelled in conserving nature. So I did my biology at A level, and I saw going and becoming a doctor, I would have become selfish. But I wanted, and that was not my dream. I wanted to help my community. Because I have grown in this community, I know the dynamics my community goes through, and I wanted to help my community. I, many people wanted me to become a doctor, but I say I can use the knowledge I've got from the biology. I started at a level to help my community come up with innovations, seeing how my community becomes better. Wow, I think that's very, very inspiring. A lot of activities, including fish farming, etc. Thank you so much, Esther. One thing that caught my attention was when you mentioned the snow that you were seeing when you were young and when you grew up, you could not see those snows again. That's to tell us that climate change is really happening in our community and it's happening fast. Only God knows what our generation to come would see maybe they might not even see rain who knows but that's a very inspiring story so currently with the work you are doing in the communities do you have any disappointments along the way my community being poor it caused the community to over depend on the beauty of the nature how I just wish they got these alternatives before they had graded the land. But nevertheless, with hopes and the works we are doing at Yandira Youth Advocates for Nature, we hope for the best in like five years to come. We also reach even other communities outside our own community or outside our own sub country. We are only limited with the resources. But Trust me, if the resources are available, we shall be able to reach a very large number of the people. Through my conservation story, there has been many uh, like limiting factors. At first, we started this organization when we were just young. I was just starting. That was in 2014. And whenever I wanted to talk with the leaders, they didn't give us attention. Whenever we tried to do this and that, we had no resources, we were students. Just imagine a student that goes to school from Monday to Friday, you have only a Saturday to help the parents in this and that to get your fees. But 
you're not helping the parent, you are going to make a nursery bed. Let's imagine, not all parents are able to withstand that. But I'm very thankful that our parents, like my parents, didn't urge over that because they had seen the passion in me and what I wanted to do. It wasn't easy. We are putting trees by then and we had no resources, we had no materials, we had no parking, like potting bags. But we had, by then in Uganda, they were producing alcohol in these polythene bags. So we would go around bars, collect the polythene bags, then come back and use the polythene bags to pot the trees, to give to our community to restore the lands. Sometimes we wouldn't get time since we were students. We would only get uh, weekends to do this work, but still, we didn't give up. We kept on going. As we started our eco stove production, it was not also really easy, but with passion, we kept on going. So, there has always been disappointment, but I'm very thankful to the people that keep me going, keep inspiring me. Mentored me to who I am today, to the leader I am today, because they were behind me. Every step I would move, every step I would make, they were behind me, guiding me in this and that. And this is Royce K. Bambale, LinkedIn, you can meet him on LinkedIn, and he's the founder. Uh, green uh, rice greening networks you can really learn more about climate and environment from him there is another mentor who mentored me who is misaki daniel who is the founder of behind it advocates for nature and actually i'm the co-founder with him who has always been with me guiding me through this and that and i'm very happy today that where I am, it's because of them, because they have always been there to mentor me. Esther, you can do it. You can do this. These people kept me going. They exposed me to other communities. They engaged me in different programs. And they gave me platform to express myself. I was also given platform to show to the community, creating awareness. This created confidence in me that really I can do it. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I, I find this really, really fascinating. A lot of audience do not know that landslides happening in the communities nowadays are also influenced from the impact of climate change. And the fact that yourself and a team member of you together are restoring those land degraded areas using trees is very, very fascinating. Do you mind sharing with the public on that landslide reclamation? Uh, and the disasters you think could happen when those landslides are not reclaimed. In December 2022, we had landslides which eroded the large land of approximately to five acres, where the, land, the soil just went into River Lubilia and blocked the water for almost 30 minutes without water getting its path because of the accumulation of the soil in the middle of the river. The lower people on the lower sides didn't get water. The water was dirty. Catchment areas for the water already flooded. People's property, people's lives. This is interconnected. Like my community is interconnected. It's interconnected. Recently, in the previous years, we have always had floods intercessed. We've always had people losing their lives. And in five years back, the people we have lost can be approximately over 100 people. Floods, landslides, really, it is really painful. It's very painful. People have lost properties, people have lost lives, catchment areas for the water has been spoiled. Actually, Africa, the percentage of emissions to the atmosphere in Africa is less compared to the other countries outside Africa. But Africa suffers the most disasters that are caused by climate change than any other continent. My country, Uganda, is mostly affected with the landslides and the floods. 
the landslides in the high plain in the highlands and the floods in the lower plains. This has left my community really prone. Now to the question of disasters. What do you think communities can do to reduce the varying effects or impact from disasters? And how can we make that known to those communities? The mitigation measures we can do for these disasters. We have the structural measures and the non-structural measures. I will start with the non-structural measures. The non-structural measures, this is where we have to do the restoration, we have to do the awareness, people need to be aware, we need to issue our own properties. Uh, through people being aware, you will know that the previous years was here happened something like in this place there was happened a landslide and when there was happened nature never forgets its cause. That's what should come with because my nature never forgets its own cause. It will still trust its own ways. Like the floods, even Yamamba in Kasese, its own path was changed. But when it floods, it comes back to where it was. That means nature doesn't forget its own cause. So, awareness, people should be aware about the floods, people should be aware about the disasters, they should know that climate crisis is real and they should be able to adapt to it. When they put innovations, come with solutions to ensure that it doesn't appear or it doesn't occur. The other one is the structural measures, mitigation measures. With the structural mitigation measures, actually this requires engineers where they come up with structures to create, to make the land resilient, like the, like assuming it is uh, a hill, they construct a structure that will make like the hill not to be eroded. For the next structure, they are there to restore and ensure the land uh, does, okay, like ensure that the land doesn't remain degraded. But for the structure, this one ensure that the land becomes now resilient. Like this requires engineer. I can recommend Bambale Kenroys, which is who is a civil engineer. He did his master's in his bachelor's in engineering, and he is he, also doing his master's in environment and water. So the water, the environment, and the engineering uh, really they can come up with the structures that are environmental friendly. No, not all of the structural measures are good for the environment, but specifically there are those that are environmental friendly. Like, if it's given also a chance to be contacted, can be able to recommend the environmental friendly structures that can really be done to, for the land to, be, to remain resilient. The, on the mitigation measures, we can, we need, all join hands, not only my community, not only join hands as as a community, as a country, Uganda, and as the world, as Africa. So now, in terms of the initiative you are running in your community, are there recognition of the works you are doing? Do you have the ministries recognizing your work, community leaders recognizing your work? Do you mind sharing with the audience? We are very young. Remember me, I was just 13. And some of our members were 14, 16. So at first, the leaders looked at just as they said in. They looked at just as ministers. But then as they saw us keeping on moving, putting to us, we started organizing sensitizations on media, sensitizations in the community. And as time went, they started to see us in us, not not my daughters, but as we we continued, the leaders started recognizing us, and they saw what we were doing. They saw the area restored. The area was already green with the trees, mm. and they came out like oh. As we went on, we, we we got a funding from the Queen's Commonwealth Trust Fund, so we're able to start our own production site of our own ecosystem. Mm. So this one, it's like they got shocked. They seeing the young people moving and all at that rate. So they, we we brought our back their attention mm -hmm. to us. Thank you so much, Esther. 
I think your work is very, very inspiring. From the age of 13 to 22, and you've been able to create such track record as a youth inspiring change in your community. What do you think youth or fellow youth out there can learn and drive change in their community too? Though my community has contributed to charcoal burning, they didn't have an alternative. But now if the since I've got the alternative and if we had the capacity to we only give them awareness, the demonstration, like for the beekeeping and the fish farming, we don't give them like that we have given them the beehives, we have given them the fish, we only do the demonstration of how they can do these things. We have our own demonstration farm where they come and learn how to rear the bees, to harvest the honey, then also how demonstration on fish farming. How can they improve their fields? Uh, how can they see that their ponds are effective? They yield which species? Like those ones we advise in those. We give them awareness and advice of how they can do it. Hmm, wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's thrilling. So thrilling. To conduct me the more, you can go to Muhindo Esther LinkedIn. Then on Facebook, it is Esther Essie. And on Facebook, you can also see Yanira Youth Advocates for Nature, which is Yen. You can go to LinkedIn and go to Royce K. Bump, Royce K. Greening, like Royce Greening Networks, to learn more about uh, the environment, to learn more about conservation, to learn more about uh, the mitigation measures to these challenges. You can always find information on these platforms. You can also see the other, there is LinkedIn account for Mr. Daniel, then Facebook account, which is also Mr. Daniel. You can always follow these people to see, to, to know more about climate change and to, more, to know more about the environment. Thank you. I remain Muhido Esther, a nature conservation activist, a gender equality advocate, and a rotaractor. One thing that really captivated me in her story was the fact that when she was young, she saw snow in Uganda. How many African countries record snow? But I'm sure those were previous years. Now, the impact of climate change is driving our temperatures and weather to an extreme point that we don't even know what is happening. There are lots of changes. We are not able to monitor, we are not able to track whatever is happening to our temperature. We all know it's climate change happening, climate change happening. I just love that story and I want a lot of individuals out there to hear this that climate change is happening and it's happening fast and it's it's happening with a lot of forces that we cannot see and it's just in the hands of young individuals like Esther to create those meaningful changes in her community. From the age of 13 to 22, she's creating such traction. Guys, it was another inspiring episode on the Bisa platform. I hope you are inspired because we are. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to all our social media channels. It's displayed on the screen and don't forget to press that notification bell to receive updates when they come by. It was I, your host, Betty Osei Bunsu. Be inspired with stories from Africa. Africa, gone is tomorrow. Today is here. Achievement to be accomplished. Nothing to fear. The twice is told, and it's not too late to take up your rights.